Welcome to Carter's Retro Reviews. You know, what's the deal with porno being 30 to 50, at least 50, 80 decibels louder than every other video I have on my computer? I don't want my neighbours to know what I get up to in the uh, wee hours. And by the way, when I say neighbours too, I'm talking about not just the people I live next to. I'm talk about, talking about neighbouring suburbs. Like, fucking kilometers away yeah anyway they don't need to know what I'm getting up to I mean I don't want to be walking down the street and then you know someone yells out hey goat play and then that becomes somehow like my nickname around this place I don't want people to know whatever messed up stuff I watch I mean let, let, let's say for instance if I had to go to jail or show people my web browsing history so how long am I gonna be in jail for that's the question. Last Bronx. If someone asked me what my favorite year of gaming was, I couldn't tell you. But I could give you a period of time, and that was the mid to late 90s. Nothing was more exciting than watching game graphics get better every year in such a substantial way that the next game really wowed you. And if you're looking for some kind of milestone that represents this as an example, Last Bronx would be mentioned in there somewhere. These days, we don't have that. We have graphics we either expect or shit graphics. Games took giant leaps forward in both graphics and gameplay and, and really whatever you wanted to achieve in a game. Last year, an article was published from game developers that were not able to make the games I want because the hardware available in then current gen systems was not powerful enough. Apart from it being a complete piss weak excuse to develop a half decent game or stray from the list of safe options, how do you think they felt in 1996? They seem to make pretty damn great games back almost 20 years ago and technology has made huge strides in what we can accomplish in games. The game was released in the arcade in 96, on the Saturn in 97, PC in 98, and much later on the PlayStation 2 for the Sega Ages series. I owned the game on PC back in the day, and my memories of the game are actually better than the Saturn version I'm playing now. But I'm not sure if that's because the PC version was the more superior version or not. So the story is crime and gang warfare is rampant in Tokyo, which must be some alternate dimension to modern day Tokyo, you know, because you'd think for the amount of people which live there, you never heard of rampant violence which plagues other countries like America or here in Australia. Fuck, we're such a bunch of yobos sometimes. Each member has a story and most of these characters are bosses of gangs. And the story in the manual is actually more in depth than anything in Wikipedia, citing the leader of the Soul Crew being viciously killed. Between the arcade mode and the satin mode, I couldn't actually tell you if there was any story from no intro video and no mention of story until you finished the game with one of the characters. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to form some kind of emotional bond with these characters or not. I can certainly pick a favourite from fighting style, but if I'm supposed to side with one from their backstory, you've come to the wrong place. Presentation's pretty good from start to finish. I don't know if my satin was playing up or there really isn't a video, but if there was one thing to nitpick, that would be it. It's not really a big deal in the scheme of things, but quite honestly, I would give up all the intro video in the world if the game was any good. I've played total dog shit in the past where the intro video was just as bad as the rest of the game. So no intro video, no big deal really. The menu presentation is pretty good, meaning it's pretty straightforward and still looks nice and does the job. In-game presentation is amazing, with the health bars looking good, information about which round and how long we've been playing are really nice additions which do not detract from the action. <laughs> Graphics are nothing short of outstanding, and they're actually, quite frankly, they're fucking amazing. I don't know if I raved about dead or alive graphically in the past, and well, I should have if I didn't. It was the sort of game that was years ahead of its time, and the exact same thing could be said about this game. Everything is as fluid as goon from a hobo's goon pillow. I heard hype around the time of this game's release that the game runs on 60 frames per second, which might be true for the PC version, but it looks like it's a bit of a stretch, not just on Saturn, but even next-gen consoles almost 20 years later are struggling to do any more than 30 frames. Colors are vibrant and work well together, and they're just nice looking. 
The backgrounds are detailed and add to the atmosphere. Sound is also pretty good. Songs are catchy without being completely forgettable, and the stupid sounds the fighters make are all there and it totally checks out. Everything adds to it in a way that only 90s fighters can. Gameplay is pretty great, but I've been neglectful in telling you that this game is vagina hard. Now, I would have said balls hard, but you know, balls are pretty sensitive, whereas vaginas can take a serious beating. It was easier than Mortal Kombat 2, but you know what, to be fair, most games are. This time, I got to level 4 before I got a belting so hard, I thought I ate some cream-based dish and my body was losing an uphill battle, which results in extremely messy diarrhea. But the computer goes from, yeah, I'll take all your beatings, take your anger out on me, feel free to beat me. Whatevs. Right up until the 4th level. It doesn't even give you a sign, but it went from white belt to Chuck Norris in about 2 fucking seconds. The player has no reason to complain about this. The controls are tighter than a retard's hug. There is plenty to master, and not really one particular character design for the fighting game challenged like Zack from DOA or Eddie Gordo from Tekken. But there is plenty here to keep you going. Each character's moves are all set out clearly in the manual and fuck, there is tons here. All the moves work effectively once you memorize them because the controls are not really what's holding you back here. Apart from a versus mode, it has an arcade mode, a survival mode and a PC or Saturn version, depending on which game you own. The difference between the two is in the arcade mode, you fight Red Eye as the boss. In the Saturn mode, Red Eye is the sub-boss and your final fight is with a specific character integral to your character's story. <coughs> Lasting appeal ticks all the boxes, really, because if there's any reason to come back to a fighting game, this has it. Two-player? Check. Hard enough to keep single-player challenging, but enough gameplay to keep you playing? Check. A butt-ton of modes? Check. See? Would I recommend this game? Yes, yes, and yes. The story is amazing. Well, the one I've read. I don't know about the one the game. The story I've read in the manual and on Wikipedia is detailed, and they even made a live-action movie based off it. More modes than you can poke a stick at, amazing graphics, surprisingly good gameplay that's deep enough to keep you playing, and it wraps it up all in a nice, neat package. Is it my favourite one-on-one -on -one fighting game so far? Not sure, but it's right up there. Your collection is shit if you do not have Last Bronx.